Greetings, and welcome back. This will be episode three of the Peace Tower Paper Clock by Revit. Um, I've been working for about, I'm going to say 15 to 16 hours now, total, on paper tubes. Uh, the first six steps of the instructions are about assembling these pieces of the frame. You cut these tubes at certain angles and glue them together with folds over certain parts. And you make these cardboard tube frames. Um, again, 16 hours on this. I'm on step 5 out of 6. I'm building these things and then I assume that we're going to assemble them in a certain order. The I've got a lot of complaints about these. First and foremost, the box that this thing comes in comes with pieces of paper the same size as the inside of the box. Look at that. That will fit in the box. Why don't they just, I don't know, why don't they just print this shape out on a full page, cut it out, and glue like five or six layers of cardboard together to make this. And then you've got a perfect frame. You don't have to spend 16 hours gluing cardboard tubes together when five layers of cardboard would do it. So they've definitely made this a lot more difficult than it needs to be. Furthermore, uh, these tubes, I mean, I don't know how perfect these need to be. You know, I don't know if it needs to be in exactly the right spot and the dimensions have to be perfect. I don't know. I, I don't, I mean, there's no markings on any of them of where the gears and axles are going to go. It's just, it's a bunch of nondescript tubes. So I imagine it's the whole process is probably going to be a lot of eyeballing. We'll find out. So I'm doing the best I can to match up with the template. I've got one drying here. On, let me make that. I've got one drying here on top of its template. See, so there's a template here. And I've been building tubes to match the template. I've got to put braces around this intersection. And then this step will be done. And I can move on to the sixth and final initial construction step and hopefully start getting into something a little more interesting than these tubes. Because I, I don't really have a lot of faith in this, honestly. And when I get them all done and I make sure it all fits, I'm going to lacquer all of this because it still doesn't seem strong enough. And after a few years of absorbing humidity from the atmosphere, I'm sure it's going to warp and sag. And it'll probably quit working. And that would be devastating considering the amount of time that I'm putting into this. And I haven't even got into any of the fun stuff yet. I haven't even gotten to the guts. I'm just building tube frames. Again, something I don't think is absolutely critical. Because the pieces of cardboard paper pages that you punch all these parts out of are, oh, on their own, large enough to handle the largest section of the frame in one go. Spend an extra 25 cents, Revit. Okay, I'll pay it to not have to build this. <laughs> Spend an extra 25 cents, have the shape printed and cut on a certain page, have like five or six pages of that, just have me pop it out, glue it together, bam. Hard cardboard frame in the perfect shape. You know, we, this isn't necessary. It's kind of frustrating. I'm, I'm not really having a lot of fun with it. I've been watching TV shows and listening to music while I'm building this to keep my mind from drifting off. I wish I had more to show you for all the time that I've spent already. But this is... If I've got my history right, it seems like this was actually the first clock they designed, and then they came back and designed the medieval clock, which is, like I'm saying... The frame is just one solid piece of cardboard. You poke it out, peg it together, you're done. You can have the whole frame ready to go in about 30 to 40 minutes if you know what you're doing. So, it's Paper Clock Peace Tower update number three. Oh, should I talk about any of the construction methods? Sure. Okay. So let's talk about some construction methods. So here's a tube. 
you get two sizes of tubes. D1, which is perfectly square, and D2, which is a little more rectangular. It's a little wider for some reason. So D2s, I've got significantly more of these. Seems like this is most of the frame, and these are usually used for supports and other things. So what I'm getting ready to do is cut a piece of D2, or D1, and that'll work right here. So what I'm going to do is, is measure the piece that I need. I'm going to lay it on the template. I wonder if there's any way I can angle the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Stay. Fantastic. Ooh. Okay, so we've got a little mark here on the template, and you still can't see it. Whatever. So I'm going to line it up there, get the exact length I want, take a little mark with a pencil, <laughs> mark it, cut it, boom. There's, there's my piece. Okay? Now, in order to put this on the frame, it's going on at a diagonal here. So what I'm going to do is take my knife, take my cardboard tube piece, I'm just going to cut a little bit along the corner down through the corner. I'm going to cut about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to do that to that corner Let's see. There's a side where the flaps overlap where I've glued it. This whole side is actually doubled up. I'm going to have that on the outside for extra strength. So I want to cut the two inside corners of this doodad. Quarter inch, maybe a little more, half a centimeter. Come on the other side, do the same thing. Okay, there we go. So now I've cut it, you can't see yet, but what that lets me do is lift up this flap. Okay. So what that's going to let me do with this piece is put it in here. Come sa. Okay, same thing with here. Now it's supposed to go on there like that with those two folds going in. Longer support struts like these here, that's fine. I've got the flap coming out along the bottom edge because there's plenty of room to do that. Here's a good example. Look at this one. See down here, this flap right there? That's part of this tube, and it's coming out along the edge. That's the side wall that's been cut and angled. Right there. But this little piece is too small. This piece is too small to get in there with those flaps, so I can either cut those down and still be a hassle, or in this case, I'm just going to push them in. Can you see that? So I've got them pushed in there. And that will let me put it on like this. Boom. And that's exactly what it's supposed to look like. So I'm going to take this off, slather glue on all the surfaces that come into contact, put it on there, set it, let it dry, make sure it's flat, and we're good to go. I'm going to do that four more times for this piece, and then I'll be done with step five. So I'm going to get to cutting. Let's see if there's anything else worth mentioning. There's a couple other weird folds that go in to this, but they are, for the most part, they're explained very well in the diagrams. So it shouldn't be too complicated. Here's a weird one. This piece has got a doodad hanging out on the end. I don't know what that's for. I imagine that's for an axle, for a gear axle that just didn't quite fit on the main shaft. So like, we're going to put a little thing in there. To add an extra axle. I could be wrong. I have no idea. We'll find out. That's really all there is. I will say with my D1s, you may not catch this because it took me a while. When I put all my D1s together, I noticed that exactly two of the D1s were longer than the others. I don't know why these two D1s are special. 
perhaps there was a cutting error whenever they printed the page that it cuts out of. But these two are longer. So I am putting them off to the side and I'm not using them until something comes up where it's obviously like, okay, I need one long continuous D1 for whatever. We will find out. That's part three. Thanks for tracking with me.